happy Labor Day to you out in TV land across the Caribbean and in Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to Book Club Corner. We're so happy to have you here with us today as we celebrate our first anniversary of Book Club Corner and commemorate Labor Day in Trinidad and Tobago and in other various Caribbean islands. And we want to remember our labor heroes, our CLR James, Buzz Butler, as well as numerous others, Gomes, etc., et al., as they say. We want to commemorate their efforts and to observe the work that they have put in to get us here in terms of our labor relations, industrial relations, the fact that you have a holiday on Saturday and Sunday and you don't always have to work seven, eight, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We have them to thank for that and we remember them today. Today we have with us, as usual, some amazing authors and we have none other in the studio with us today, His Worship Baliram Maraj, the newest mayor of Arima. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Joel. And um, it is an honor and pleasure to come to the Bego, my second home where I have a home here. Um, to be part of this distinguished session. I do commend the managers allowing you to promote Caribbean Books Marketing Hub and to provide that community with the support. Writing a book is telling a story on the history and I'm happy, be, not because I wrote a book. <laughs> it's a lesson what I wrote, but it's good to know the children and their children to come mm -hmm. that, that what had happened, why it happened, and what, where we are today. Yes. The other public uh, uh, question on the Labor Day tomorrow, I too join with you to wish all those leaders who sacrifice uh, George Weeks, Pandey, and many more who did their part for the working class today, yes. that they are able to enjoy a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Yes. So congratulations on the book part, congratulations to the, 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 the CB station, and I hope we come a big station between Trinidad and Tobago because apart from my second hat, my first hat is a businessman. Yes. And we at ADM are big suppliers of food in Tobago. Yes. So Tobago is inside of my blood. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for having me here and God bless. Hope we have a, a great discussion today. Yes. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you're here with us today. We Listen, we have a great session here today, as His Worship says. And we don't just have a great session. We have a delicious session for you today <laughs> as we celebrate the first year anniversary of Book Club Corner. We have as well two virtual um, authors, two virtual guests, and that's Ira Mathur and Garnet Lawrence. I hope your cameras are on. We're waiting for you. Ira Mathur, she is the author of The Love the Dark Days. She's an award-winning multimedia journalist, the former president of the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, and the winner of the 2023 Bocas Prize for nonfiction. And she's the longest-running columnist for Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. And we have as well Garnet Lawrence. He's the author of Anansi and the Fire Ants, the 2023 Bocas Children's Prize winner, the founder of Speak Life Productions, and the former Tobago Performing Arts Company Drama Coordinator. And of course, we left the best for last, right? Mr. 
His Worship, Mayor Baliram Alderman, Baliram Miraj, is the author of From to Big um, Tomato Boy to Business Magnate. He is the Mayor of the Royal Chartered Borough of Arima. He's a Shaconia Medal Gold recipient, the founder of the Arima Business Association, as well as the CEO of Arima Discount Mart, and he also he is the founder of the Friends of the Arima Hospital as well as the Friends of Tobago. And we, you know, we're so happy to have all these authors. They're doing such great things to shape the face of Caribbean literature for us. Hi, Ira. Hi, Garnet. Are you all there with us today? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> It's wonderful to have you all. We're not hearing you. I'm not, I'm not hearing you all. Let Am me I just ask. Us? Are you hearing us? Yes? Yes, I'm yes. hearing Okay, you great. I'm, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing you all, so I may have to read some lips until we get it sorted out. But <laughs> it's so wonderful <laughs> to have you all here with us, Garnet and Ira. I know Garnet is in Barbados. Ira is in Trinidad with yeah. her parents, and we thank you for tuning in with us um, during this time. Garnet, we want to thank you for, you know, being part of this Book Club Corner today. It's amazing the work that you have done as a playwright, um, as the winner of the Children's Prize. And Ira, you have so much to share with us today. You know, we, we just can't stop singing you all praises. I'm so happy to have the three of you all with me today. I feel very honored. And as usual... <laughs> Thank you. As usual, we do wine tasting here. So I don't know what you all are drinking, Ira and Garnet. I don't I don't know what you all have on your menu. But we have some pigeon peas wine. When I tell you from Joe Field. Yeah, we got pigeon peas wine from Joe Field. And we're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to do the five S's of wine tasting. And we'll tell you. Mayor Baliram and I will tell you how this wine is going down. So see you in a few minutes. Get your snacks, get your drinks, and come right back. Notice is hereby given that the 63rd Annual General Meeting, AGM, of the Bethel Credit Union Cooperative Society Limited will take place using a hybrid format. On Thursday, June 27th from 5 p.m., the physical location will be upstairs the Mount Marie branch office. The purpose of the meeting is to receive minutes of the 62nd Annual General Meeting, to receive reports as follows, statutory and board appointed committees, report of the auditor and audited financial statements, to receive budgetary proposals for 2024, to elect officers, to approve general resolutions, and lastly to transact any other business that may properly come before the meeting. A digital copy of the AGM brochure is available on the website. Please visit our website at www.bethelcreditunionttt.com or any one of our branches for further information. Rotisserie, mouth-watering fries, salads, combos, and specials galore. Feeling for something to eat? Come and see. Our rotisserie is seasoned to the tea. Kicking chicken, masala, and jerk roast. Crispy fries made from scratch. Who do you know can beat that? Or salads freshly cut and packed. When you taste it, you'll be wanting to come back. So come check us out on number 2 Robinson Street, Uptown Scarborough, Tobago. We open on Saturday nights from 7.30 to 11.30 p.m. Monday to Thursday. We're open from 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. And on Friday, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Contact us at 772-7443 and all social media handles at the Rotisserie Factory. Welcome back to all our viewers across Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean. We are Book Club Corner happening 
every Wednesday in the beautiful town of Scarborough Tobago and today we are speaking with three amazing authors we are speaking with His Worship Baliram Maharaj we are speaking with Ira Mathur and Garnet Lawrence but before we get back to them I just want to thank our amazing sponsors supporters as well as friends and a family member <laughs> right Neve thank you so much my good friend Neves he gives us an arrangement a floral arrangement for book club corner on a Wednesday Neve I want to thank you so much safe travels where you are as well as Jofield wines we are going to be sampling um, some wines today from Jofield it's <laughs> Pigeon peas wine, if you can imagine. I can't wait to get into it. And I also want to thank my lovely sister, Crystal, across in Japan. Hi, Crystal. Thank you very much for this amazing kimono. Guys, I just had to show it off. She has supplied me with this beautiful kimono. Thank you very much. And we want to also thank Chef Lovelies. He's here today to help us celebrate Book Club's Corner's first anniversary. And he has brought some delicacies. I'll just get into the special ones. We have crumb cake. Listen to me. I can't wait. Crumb cake. We have um, an eclair with mango sauce. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something, right? He is in Bon Accord with his new freshly minted bakery and cafe. You all need to get down there very, very quickly. And he also has, listen, I don't think I should give away everything. If you don't get down here to celebrate with us, you know, you just won't know all the things he has. But the last thing I'll tell you is that he has a cream cheese and spinach pie. <sighs> You all know I'm a foodie and a bookie, right? So I can't wait to get into them. So thank you very much, Chef Lovelace, for your amazing delicacies and for helping us celebrate Book Club Corner's first anniversary on Labor Day. And we're going to get into the wine. Mia Baliram, yeah. cheers to you. We're going to be doing the five S's yeah. of wine tasting, and it is to swirl the wine. We look at the color, the clarity, and, and you can tell this has a really nice peachy color to it, right? And as we swirl the wine, we look for the legs. So that's when you see it, you see the legs, that's the sugar content. Ooh, mm-hmm. The viscosity, as they call it. And then we sniff the wine. Mm. You're getting quite a, f a, a floral bouquet coming up at you. And then we sip and we savor. Mm. <laughs> it's quite delicious. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Salron. This is amazing wine. You always support local industries and local businesses, so we want to thank Jofi Wines for his amazing products and for sharing his talent of winemaking with the world. As we get into it, we want to talk about, um, you know, how it all began. Mia Baliram, I want to get into you and your book how this all came to be so uh, guys as you see this book here it's quite voluminous sometimes we have books we can just throw in your handbag and sometimes you have material you need to sit with this is a book you need to sit with this is called the life and lessons of baliram maraj and this book has so many gems in it i couldn't even get through all of it at once and let me tell you i don't like to break the spines on my books that's so you know it's always looking brand new i like my book to look crisp mayor baliram could you tell us about how you came to become an author what was your journey like and why did you decide to become um, to pen your life and get it written down. I know you have an author, and that's by um, Mr. Dean. Yeah. He's the 1997, um, Shikuna, not Shakuna, he got a gold yeah, medal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah, I went with. Yes. And Dr. Isaiah Edwards. Yes. They did a wonderful job. Amazing. And Dr. K. 
Ken, Professor Ramchan, who was um, a part of the book too, Mr. Philip Rochford, had some good people behind that book there mm -hmm. who wrote stories in it. Shankar Sitaram, um, Kapili Maharaj, who mm -hmm. left and gone. He was my lawyer. Yeah. Um, Mr. How, did you how, how did that come to be that you wanted to pen your life? Well, it's always... I grew up with my father at the age 15 years. I left school. The book, the, the story is in the book why I left school at 15 years. Yes. It's a nice story, I wouldn't say. And he took me to the SC to give, give me some pressure to go back to school. Yes, I saw. Not knowing that that is where my journey as a businessman was going to start. Yes. And he is one person who learned from his father being an indenter Indian mm -hmm. from India. Yes. Who came, these people came down here with a contract they call it like a bond. A bond. Five years, after five years, you had the opportunity to go back and they send you back or they give you a lot of land. My grandfather took that opportunity to stick the lot of land away. And they continued with planting tomatoes and everything, sugarcane. They started with a donkey cart transport. And my father, going up to the estate, is two, from a remote to San Jose, is two hours. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate during sleep and what he's saying there. Listen to the story of what our ancestors yes. did to bring us to Trinidad. And permit me, Joel, Miss Joel, the same thing applied to the slaves who were treated badly. Yes. Again, the colonial people. And when I say colonial, no, it's not necessary English. Mm -hmm. There were colonials from Spain who yes. did all these things. And what they did to the slaves, it hurt me. I must permit me again to go backwards. One of my subjects in school was, I choose scripture. I think that was an easy thing to pass, Acts of the <laughs> Apostles. Yes. Again, Jesus was taken advantage in the worst way. Mm -hmm. Who did it? Man did it. Yes. Man killed him. Man suffered. Man spat on him. Yeah. Jesus. And if you go back to the first people, Columbus' question is, did he really discover Trinidad? Yeah. I, my answer is a big question. I will not say it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a there great area. There were 40,000 people living in Arima at that time when he found Trinidad. Yes. So that's a question mark. As a politician, as a businessman, as a senior citizen, I say no more. That is yes. for people to read. And 251 years after Christopher Columbus, say he discovered Trinidad, the same Spanish colonial people came here with their guns and started to kill off and chase the people who was there, who was there. Mm -hmm. So he said they discovered, but he killed them too. Yeah. Those who survived, now I am neck and neck with the survival because that is the story of people mm -hmm. who are man's worst enemies. I spoke about the Spanish, yeah. I spoke about Jesus, mm -hmm. I spoke about the colonial, and the worst they could do with, with his, the, the, the people who have been chained yes. in Dentier. When they came, the people they brought them back as in Dentier. The book tell you, yeah. they will tell you to bring a hundred bag of rice, and we were cargo. This was the story told to me. Yes. That is why I had to document these things. I had to go back to my roots and see where they come from. Mm -hmm. But in the process, I started to grow the tomatoes and this. And my see my father will sell nine months planting and so on and take about three months of tomatoes, a vendor will come and pay 10 cents. They carry it in the market in one night. 
until I looked for 15 cents. Yeah. So what do I make? 50 <laughs> percent? Yep. And this young 15, 16 year old boy said, hey, I could do that too. My father killed him and said, what, nine months to make 10 cents. He made five cents in one night. Mm -hmm. So I said, Papa, I said, call him Papa. I mean, I'll buy, I'll let me buy a van and give my driver now. Yeah. He listened to me. He buy a second hand truck. And all of these things I kept on documenting and that is with the book. Yeah. All these jot down things. Yeah. I and love that, that you decided to. So what I'm hearing is that you decided to write this book to document and record your history, go back to your roots and put it in one document, not just what you've done and where your life went, but where it came from. And I really love that. You know, as parents, you know, I heard a lot of stories from my mother and father. It was always about, you know, where their parents came from. And we need to keep sharing that knowledge and information with the generations as they come up. Because if we don't explain and talk about where we came from, that information will be lost. And yeah, our yeah. generation won't have anything to hold on to as they go forward. And we do need to have that. Yeah, Ms. Earl, uh, history must be kept. Yes. I am proud of you. God bless you for this, what you are doing, marketing these authors. There's a story will be forgotten. That book, when you saw the story where my father died, and it, the type of hospital they had, yeah. I see I, that will not happen the next day. Yes. And I fight for 37 years hmm. to get a new hospital. Yeah. Then the people from Tobago came to say, Mr. Maharaj, could you help me form? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I either told him to me, Miss Sissy, he's the owner of um, gay something monkey. See, gay Pastor monkey. Say, mm -hmm. He came with a group of nurses and things. Yeah. Show us how to do the constitution. Mm -hmm. Let us form Tobago, Friends of Tobago Hospital. Yeah. And we have, I came here and fought. I live here. I, I don't really live here, but I have a home here. Yes. My business, my brand, um, I might be plugging in something by Rainbow. <laughs> it's Rainbow fine. is That's all about fine. Tobago. Yes. Rainbow corn beef is vines. We sell, we sell Tobago, get food from us. Mm -hmm. As far as I have bread in my body, Tobago will always get food. Yes. Every day a chocolate, two chocolates come here. Mm -hmm. And it's in all the big stores, whether it's Penny Savers and um, uh, Viewport and, Viewport and all these yes. other stores there. Yeah. But you are well kept here with food, basic food from us. Yes. And we, 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 we will we move from book and so much things that happen. Yes. So I will ensure, as I started, I also say to you in the book, in 1996, Miss Camille Regis came here and opened a supermarket association. Mm -hmm. So I'm also a foundation member of the supermarket association. Mm -hmm. Friends of Arima Hospital, where my father died, and it had the best hospital now. Yeah. My father, my mother, who worked at my wife, she died there. Yes. That is God's work. Mm -hmm. When they were to, COVID came, Prime Minister and the Minister of Health told me in a function, Bali boy, we have to take the hospital and convert it into a new brand hospital mm -hmm. that we fought for 37 years. Seven government uh, placard them, <laughs> and no apologies, mm -hmm. but we got it. Yes. A save is a save lives. I'll have to accept it, but I don't like it. Yeah. But it's a save lives. So we fought for 37 years to be part of saving life for COVID. Yes. So I could go on, you know, yeah, I'm also starting. We have so start much up, to talk um, about. Eh? Yeah, we have so much to talk about, but I don't want to leave out our virtual authors, Garnet and Ira. We want to talk to you all. Are you all there? We want to talk to you all about where you all are now. How is it going? As they say, how is how it started and how it's going? You know, Garnet, I know you won the Boca Slip Prize for your children's book. Ira, I feel so... Um, you know, I feel so akin to you with your new progress for your book. Tell us about what's happening with your book. Let's go with Ira first. Tell us about how it started, as they say, and how it's going with your 
you know, your book being published in India. Tell us about that. I, when we came from India, I came straight to Tobago. Um, I can't, can you hear me? Okay. So when we came there, Ooh. I think that and um, connectivity I... is poor between us and you. Um, let's see how we could work. I'm hearing myself now. Can you hear me? Hello, you're hearing Ira. I am hearing Ira coming in and out. Yes. I'm hearing you, but you are coming Yes, yes. Agarnet, we're hearing you clearly. Perhaps we just give it okay. some time. Maybe, Ira, you come out and come back in with the link. Garnet, let's go okay. to you. Tell yes. us about what your journey has been like in terms of when you started and where you are now. Okay, so um, as you had said before, I'm a playwright, first of all. So I've been writing and directing my own plays for since i'm 18 years old and um, that's where i started off went over into screenwriting um, writing short films doing some stuff with ue um, even writing my own full and um, movie production i would have won a screenwriting competition in 2022 the faith in film national script competition um, so that was me going into expanding from plays into film. What happened with Anansi and the Fire Ants was that this was a short play that I was meant to prepare students for returning to school after the COVID-19 um, restrictions had been lifted. I have two small children, so I wanted to make sure that children would have been adequately prepared for that transition back into school and practicing the three Ws. Um, that play didn't happen, and I thought it was too important to stay on a drive on a computer somewhere. So I went and got it published. So my journey into becoming an author was really and truly taking a play and turning it into a book. Um, after winning the Booker's Children's Book Prize, I had to now consider myself as an author. What does that mean? Because whereas writing a play has certain rules and certain structures and certain ways it's organized, being an author, I believe, was a bit different. And so I was challenged by the president to write another book, um, but have less pictures because the target group they were looking for was people between the, the tweens like 10, 8 to 12, and they need to be reading um, books that are less of pictures and more of black and white letters to improve their literacy as well. And so I have a second um, play that I wrote, or short play, that was for the Division of Health, Clean Air, No Tobacco Day Festival in 2022. And it was called Boy Boy and the Forest of Shadows. And I said, I'm going to do the same thing I did with Anansi and the Fire Ants. Take that play and turn it into a book. And I'm thinking, so now that I'm an author, what does my voice sound like? Given that this is a book that is meant to be read, but it's an Anansi story which is meant to be said out loud, how do I maintain the integrity of hearing the storyteller's voice while writing a short story or not even a short story like a novella now because it has it took its own form in terms of being almost like a detective kind of story and that transition for me was what the prize did in terms of okay now you're no longer just a playwright now you're an author what does that mean what how do you think how do you write does your writing style change um that said that is probably where my journey is on to now i'm still doing plays not gonna stop doing that 
I'm still going to be doing film once I get the chances to. Um, but now I'm looking for writing opportunities where I can challenge myself and develop that voice as a writer, as more writer for books, even for articles, as compared to writing plays and writing screenplays. But that's where I am right now. That is such an awesome story. You know, I listen to you and I love that Anansi is a detective. I love mysteries. Mm. Anansi had to discover what was um, destroying his village, right? What, they destroyed mm -hmm. his garden and then he and his son, right? The, dyna the dynamic father-son duo went on. I hope I'm not putting out any spoilers, but this is such an interesting <laughs> book. You have to get it. How, yes. You have to get this book to find out what was destroying the village and what destroyed their garden. And if you mm. are interested in reading this book, and Nancy and the fire ants about what um, happened with Anansi and the village. Because for the first time, we're looking at Anansi as a detective, right? Anansi is from folklore, right? He is mm -hmm. an ant with multi, you know, a very big family and all of that. And look, we're talking about. So I like your transformation of Anansi, not just this folklore um, character, but now you're looking at, you know, he, you can turn this into a mystery. And we love having a conversation about how your book can be transformed into a movie, mm -hmm. right? Even into mm -hmm. animation. So I am looking mm -hmm. forward to where you're heading, Garnet, with your book. Please remember, yeah. right? Children love on a Saturday morning. I used to love to watch cartoons. This book will make an amazing mm -hmm. cartoon, Garnet. So thank you yes. very much for yes. that. Yes. 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 His worship has something to add for you. Yes. Got okay. It. Um, congrats. What amazed me thank you. is when youths like you set the peace for other youths. And I see you started young, you're ambitious. I am two, two or three times your age. <laughs> but um, in this state of crime, your message mm -hmm. should be, no matter how poor you are, there's a way for you, like what you did. There's a way you could think. You were the writer of stories. You went now to be an author. And I know you'll add more to it. So congratulations from my group and as the Mayor Farima, God bless you. And I want to see more of Garnet Lawrence down the road. Thank you so much. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. Ira, we go to you to this know. second book. Oh, yes, go ahead, Garnet. No, you were saying? Oh, sorry. Because this second book that I'm doing, as I said, it was for the Clean Air campaign. And it shifted in my mind from just addressing no to smoking, but how do I help boys in particular find themselves? So it's now a coming of age story to help encourage young men, because I have a son as well. How do I teach my son or give my son something that he can take in his mind, he can go with, to help him avoid the addictions that are all, all around him, whether it's alcohol or marijuana or smoking, whatever it is, how do I empower him? So like I said, this journey to becoming an author has completely shifted how I write and what I want to say and how I want that message to be communicated. Yes. Thank you very much for that, Garnet. Thank you. Ira. We come back to you. I'm hoping all the mm -hmm. technical issues are fixed. Thank you so much for holding on. Um, how are you? How are you in Trinidad? How's the weather? It's rainy, but you know, I love the rain. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Amazing. Tell us, Ira, from... And, you gave me one of your books. I have never forgotten um, your warmth and how personable you are. And um, I love your book. Love it. Love the Dark Days by Ira Mathur. Tell us about your journey as an author, because you're now being published in India. 
And when you started, it was a book simply in Trinidad and Tobago. So tell us about that journey, about how did it happen, about that phone call when they called you, and what was the process for you to go from being published solely in Trinidad and Tobago, distributed in the Caribbean, and now being published in India? Was very quick. I'm not hearing you, Ira. Is it is it just me? No, I'm not here. You're not hearing her either? Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it was Mrs. Thomas from Tobago, from Bishop's High School, and I went to see her and I gave her a copy of the book. Can you hear me? Uh, and uh, she, when I was 12 years old, she said that I could be a writer, you know, that I could, because I was not doing well in the other stuff. They were all very strange and new to me because I'd come from India from a very different syllabus. So I, I knew I wanted to be a writer because she encouraged me. Then, you know, over the years, I became a journalist and I sat down taking notes in my grandmother's nursing home and when she was dying. And, uh, you know, that became a book and it was actually published in the UK by People Tree, which is, you know, the, the foremost press for black and Caribbean writing. Um, and, and then what happened was because the book is based on three continents, it's based in India, it's based in England and in the Indies. And of course, you know that I spent some time with the Nobel laureate Derek Walcott in St. Lucia. Yeah. Um, it found India. I went earlier here to the Jaipur Literary Festival. To give an idea how huge it is, every session has 30 million viewers. Um, you know, over 40,000 people pass through that venue every day. So there's a lot of readers in India. And in a sense, this is a book about my love for the West Indies. I'm half Muslim, half Hindu. We were never quite accepted in India. You're because, breaking you know, up, Ira. Can you just, yes, I'm hearing you, but you're just in and out a bit. Oh, I don't gosh. want to miss anything you're saying. Very quick. Yes. Yep. Very quick. I'm not hearing you at all now. I don't oh, know God. what's happening. Can you not hear me at all? No? Yeah, we're breaking up. You, but, uh, you yeah, I'm not yeah. hearing you, but we're gonna we're gonna get some more from from you, Ira, because we're happy that you are so close in Trinidad and Tobago and we can get back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you so much, Ira. It was Bye -bye. lovely to chat with you. Um, you know, it's amazing the work um, and the journey becoming an author puts us on. You know, it's such an amazing journey. I would wish this on anybody. It's something that is really going to put you in a different perspective, a different mental perspective um, when you get in this journey of being an author. But we're going on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to speak with... His Worship, Mayor Baliram Maraj. We're going to chat with him some more. And we're going to talk about his book, Lessons and Life of Baliram Maraj. Hey. Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean. We're here chatting with His Worship, Baliram Maraj. And, you know, it's such an amazing day today because we've had some very special authors with us today, Garnet Lawrence, Ira Mathur, and His Worship, Baliram, talking about their books and where the authorship journey has taken them from start to finish. Mr. Baliram Maraj, Bali, That's His Worship, you know, so many great titles, Mayor of Arima. 
we want to talk to you about your transition from becoming a regular business person, a business executive, to now being the mayor of Harima, from being a Burgess yes. to now being the mayor. Yeah. How did you find that process? Walk us through that. I was born at Arima Hospital, and all I know is Arima, Arima, and Arima. <laughs> yes. My feet is Hindu feet, and we stopped at that, but Arima is several feet. And I respect every from the Baptist right back. Um, so what we did, it seemed that I had a passion from seven and eight years we sell like the Polari, um, Pilma, um, Palm City, um, Barra, what they call doubles, with the Barra, China, and so on. And when races come, I had a glass case there, seven, eight years. So we started a parlor business in a, like what everybody sell on a table outside. So we didn't born into money. My parents worked for what they call survival. We put food on the table mm -hmm. and working bit by bit, seven days a week, dusted on, money came, growth came, wealth came. It was not the objective, but because of honesty, trust, and belief, and hard work, wealth will follow. It's a message I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to the ch children out there. Yeah. This we in an area of crime that needs some kind of mentorship, like myself, like Garnet, like Ira, yeah. who came from humble beginnings. And people, they didn't want to make easy money, like today's children. And let them know the easier way we could make money. Mm -hmm. From selling my, in the morning, I have to go on water plants in my backyard. Then Senator Horn lives on the street, and some people, my mother will make the car, put them in bottles, and I will walk to bottle, take up a, 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 like this bottle, mm -hmm. six cents for it, mm -hmm. bottle of milk, yes. cow milk, fresh cow milk. Good morning, Mrs. Horn. If you don't say morning, she'll rough you up. <laughs> and yeah. she had mango, everything in the yard, and I'll say, and the ground rotten, I said, Miss Horn, could I pick up one? Sure. I can't pick up that mango without accent. Yes. And I, she will put, and I can't say nothing. Your neighbor <laughs> correct you like anybody. Whenever your neighbor correct you, your father and mother go in with a stick for them. <laughs> I'm talking it's to you, but age. I want the children to hear. These are lessons. Yeah. These are mentorship. Yeah. And today, the same thing is happening in school. No support from the parents as should be single parents and from the time a teacher, a, a, a teacher correct a child talk to the parents he want to come and fight with each other yeah so growing up in arima these are the environment wherever <clears throat> you grow up mm -hmm. excuse me that environment the culture gets in your blood. Yes. I started the book about the steel band, 1958, we formed the Teen Stars. I was in 60, I was the king of the band in Arima. I'm a Hindu, eh? Yes. And if you're beaten, pan wrong your neck. <laughs> I, all of us, mm -hmm. we had a kind of, we were now moving from the vigilantes pan to the middle class. Teachers, police children. We have a circle. Yeah. And you're beating your pan. And if you see a man put down your pan and you go and you bush cut and your father and mother coming behind you. <laughs> so we used to run and do the yeah. days. I'm telling you where we reached to write this book. Mm -hmm. um, we started from the parlor. We went to a shop. We went to a mini mart. We went to supermarket, supermarkets. Then we went to buy, and buy the estate and we started planting the same tomatoes and I saw Trading start there by buying goods and selling, mm -hmm. and that fast track it. When I go to town now, I sell my all my market goods from her. That, those years was high low, yes. and we come back, 
and I stopped by the wholesale here in the street. I buy goods, and and we sell it back in the shop. So, you, you it was a um, it was a what you call comparative advantage where you could sell yes. instead of coming back empty, you bring goods with you, yeah. back up in the estate, and so on. His book also told you about some when my father died. I see that will not happen in the state of the hospital, and you have the old buildings here. Mm -hmm. I saw the learning in page 49 in the book tell you how anybody could really go into business by, by how profit is made. Yes. You see this page 49? Look at it, and there the last part here is the profit. Your duty is to extend this last part. It's in the book. Um, we and also this is, had this is chapter four, which is one of my favorite chapters. Yeah, it's about business. The name of that chapter is Risk in Business. Yes, yes, I really love that one. Entrepreneurs, there's a chapter in this book specifically for you, for us, right? That is giving you a listen, there is a lot of information. It's like a mini business school in that yeah. chapter, and yeah. I really like that about it. When you got the call to become the mayor, that invitation, would, you know, Bali, you know, you want to be the mayor, how did that go from that call to what you know now, the different life okay, that you live now? Okay, I tell now. you, my next book is coming soon. <laughs> I love it. I'll tell you, Yeah. I was in a temple, mm -hmm. half past seven, talking to a guru. He wanted to see me. Yes. In the middle of June, this warm, nice, cool, cool Sunday morning, I take, my son plays music. Mm -hmm. So he plays music there every Sunday. He said, Daddy, the, the Swami wants to see you. You know, religion and religious is important. Yes, yes one and a half hours, I tell people, don't waste no time. That's enough. <laughs> but what? The divine creator wants you to do, spiritually, is what I believe in. Yes. So I spend two hours in church temple, but the other hours for the week, anything I could help, every day I help somebody. Yeah. It's very important. My faith, faith says, if you are making money and you cannot save some and give some, you better don't make the money. Yes. Save some budget, you, you spend, you put your, you, you, whatever you have to spend, what you call in business recurrent expense, light bill, this and that, entertainment, all right, put $10 there and give away $10. That is what my feet say to do. And we did that. So these are, the, you want me to touch, so we had the good, the bad, my, my father, you talk about the mayorship, I was in the temple. Gordon said, my brother is crawling. The pundit is telling me, quarter to eight, you will get a big call one day mm -hmm. from a leader of this country that for a big job. He said, me, I want a leader of a big business already. I have enough work. I yeah. can't handle no. <laughs> what big job I want again. Mm -hmm. What other name I want again. The book tell you how much lot I change here. Yeah. I could go on to that, you know. Yes. I came out of the meeting and about quarter past eight, the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, Palisade mm -hmm. House, called me and offered me, it's somebody in his office, eh? she was there when somebody was talking to me, are you Bali Ramaraj and myself? Yes, my new, just finished talking to the Swami, a leader, mm. big man. Mm. <laughs> I go to get a call yeah. from a big man for a big job in this country. So they said, if you will accept the mayorship. I was a registered member of the PNM 55 years ago. Right. Ashton Ford and Bobby Charles signed my paper. Right. And I raised funds, but my father never allowed me to go to meetings mm -hmm. and put on jerseys right. because in the food business, retail, your customers is mixed. 
Your workers is mixed. Correct. So you don't want people to see you in the politics. Mm -hmm. But all my friends was in the PNM. Right. And you're young and it, oh, them get in with the girls and I can't get you. <laughs> so I joined the PNM and when uh, my friends oh, Ashton and all of you we go down the bar, yeah. all them country girls coming down there and we so that's how I was a registered member of the PNM. All right. I got the call. I say, I thank you very much, but I need some time. He said, I don't have time. Tomorrow is registration for all the men. I say, if I put on meaning and I can't say, will you be disappointed? She said, no, we'll put extra names and we'll choose you. Mm -hmm. But we want you to consider it. Mm -hmm. Today, I thank him very much. I don't know how I was going to handle both my business and this. Yes. But God wanted me to give back. And Mayor is giving back, which I'm happy to do. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, there was a big Father's Day celebration. Our band, Angel Lab, couldn't get in a, re a sponsor. I give them a, a status sponsor them. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm enjoying now. Mm -hmm. And the more I give, I find the more I get back. So. I accepted it. I thank the executive of the party. I will prove to them, I try to prove to them, I will bring back Arima mm -hmm. and all these celebrations for August. Yes. Um, when, and when I'm there with the mayor, the biggest thing here now is uh, not the work, is the invitations. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> when somebody passed away, you have to go. Yeah. And you have to make sure, prepare to say something, mm -hmm. and that is it. But at my age and my, you know, you want to do it. What is more interesting for me now, August was the biggest celebration in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arima Fest. Yeah. With the Santa Rosa celebration. Everybody used to come down from all over the world, all Trinidadian, mm -hmm. spend time there, races. Uh, the first people, if on August 1st, we fired the cannon, yes. the, the smoke ceremony, yeah. emancipation in the evening. And um, by about the 10 to 11 this year, we have in the carnival. Mm -hmm. It's And then you have the 25th of August, a Santa Rosa celebration. Yes. I'm going to add for the longest while, the mayor's ball this year in Arima. Holy Cross College on the 24th. Mm -hmm. And my new, I ain't bringing no big young artist. Yeah. Is um, um, not seldom, kind of, um, the Joey Lewis. Yes. So when you come there, come on your dancing shoes. Bringing back memories. Yes, and yeah. I expect to have a lot of the senior uh, ministers and so there. Right. Um, we could go on and then we have the independence celebration and Listen. so on. I, what I took away, incidentally, was the fact that, um, you know, he, he joined an organization to, um, cause, you know, the others were getting through with the girls. <laughs> they were getting, they were getting girlfriends and he was not. So he decided and, to join the organization. <laughs> I, I mean, love it. You know, when you're young, you, you, you have to do what you're going to do. <laughs> no, the fact, apart yeah. from the customers, eh? Yeah. If you're not there, but I, I, I couldn't go to the, Put on the jersey and mm -hmm. thing, but when you know, and this is with Eric Williams. Yes, wow. And uh, nation building. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> were building nation in the bar with the girls. <laughs> and when you know, listen, we have to chase to that. We got to chase to that. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you something. <laughs> We're gonna be wrapping up, but we had a chase to that <laughs> one. He was building. Was when you hear Mr. Doctor Williams, is oh, come God. about five o'clock. Yes. Every man running out from the bar. And wipe in your mouth and you say, like you did, listen to everything. We don't know what we're doing for the whole day. Yo, yo, the tea, of, the tea too hot right now. We get in, we, he's spilling all the tea and it's real hot. <laughs> listen, we're going to be wrapping up. But before we wrap up, uh, His Worship, tell us where can readers get your book? In Trinidad and in Tobago. Well, I brought a few with me. I will I give it to you. Yes. And you could, I'll work out, I'll let the manager who, my manager, deal yes. with you. Yes. Okay, great. But there is in most of the bookstores. Mm -hmm. And Nelson's, it's in Nelson's bookstores here in Tobago. Yeah. And but Educator's bookstore as well. 
Yeah. I would like to make one comment. Sure. This VAT and tax on these books, I am going to write the Minister of Finance and say, look, local authors, move that. Move that. You're a, you're a man after my own heart. Every conversation we've had, for book, we talk about customs and VAT on books. Books are for education. They fuel our soul. They're for our imagination. You know, customs and VAT deter because of the, the increase in price. And we need to make sure that we provide for the educational, um, you know, thrust and development of our nation. And we don't need any impediments for people reading and for buying books. So I love that you mentioned that. that. Before you close, I'd like to add that yes. I, I have no apologies on bended knees. Mr. Minister of Finance, with due respect, just get rid of anything like fat or tax on knees. Encourage people to more authors and our children have to go back to reading. Mm. This tablet is not doing us good. Let them start to read and understand the history. I thank you, Mr. Minister, in advance for your acceptance to move anything in tax or VAT. Amazing, amazing plug. If you heard nothing from our book club corner today on Labor Day, we need that custom and tax removed. We need books to be cheaper, less expensive. We need to make sure that everyone can afford books. Now, you can go to the library and you can use a book. You can borrow a book. The libraries in Trinidad and Tobago, Nalys is doing a fantastic job with libraries across Trinidad and Tobago. But we also need to make sure that if you want to purchase a book, there is no deterrent to that. So we want to thank uh, His Worship for that amazing plug in terms of you know, something to help and push the publishing industry forward. We want to thank you for that. But before we, we close, I want to thank all our viewers across Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean for staying with us and for tuning in today. And I want to thank all our sponsors, part sponsors, full sponsors. Thank Tobago Updates for the platform. We want to thank Neve I for Design for the amazing centerpiece we also want to thank caribbean book marketing hub for partially sponsoring as well as mansa enterprises we want to thank them as well this is a books and stationery store in calder hall a new business coming up and we want to say thank you to them for past sponsoring and we also want to thank all the authors who have been through book club corner on our first anniversary thank you very much for being here and for sharing your love of the written word and your love of literacy because without literacy you won't be reading and without reading authors have no place i want to also thank joe wines i want to thank cane horrific for their cane juice we got a cane and a rough skin lemon blend they're right across from the port mall check them out local local we support local as well as i also want to thank chef lovelace for his amazing tray of deliciousness we're going to get into it after as we celebrate our first anniversary chef lovelace he's right in bon Accord with his new bakery and cafe you can get some internet free wi-fi sit and chill eat a little you know cream cheese and spinach pie or perhaps an eclair with mango sauce. He has some delicacies down there. We want to thank him for helping us today to celebrate. And again, to you, the viewers, get in tune with your inner author. And if you aren't an author already, start penning your story, whether it is fiction or nonfiction. Write your story down. You too can be an author. And all the authors out there, you need to market yourself. We need to know who you are and hear your story. Call us on Book Club Corner. The number is 761-8790. Give us a call if you're an author and you'd like to also sit in our Book Club Corner chair. We would love to have you. So thank you again and cheers to His Worship. Thank you. Mayor Baliram, thank you for having the time for us today, I know today, you know, is a special day for your family. Yes, You're yes. having a wedding. So I thank you for sticking with us and just slipping into Book Club Corner. Thank you. <laughs> Could I do a clothing remark? Of course. So I too would like to join Ms. Joel and this company here for promoting what they are doing for new authors, 
and maintaining the history. I'd also like to join all the unions, all the workers tomorrow. Today, in fact, uh, that enjoy yourself, drink, but don't let it drink you, and, <laughs> and drink and stop and have a great day today. May God bless all our workers in this country. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. See you next week when we have Christine Salandi on. She's our next author for next week. She's going to be talking to us about her book, Three Ships Come Sailing Home. See you next week.